Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white control deck with a combo finish that's going to try to mill the opponent out thanks to the Teresian Mindbreaker as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This 7 mana 6-4 says when it attacks, defending player mills half of their library around it up. But we're not going to actually play the Mindbreaker and then try to attack with it. Instead we want to discard the Mindbreaker so we can unearth for 1 and triple blue and then get that attack in. And Mindbreaker being an artifact creature also dodges removal like go for the throat which is one of the few instant speed answers to an unearthed creature the wandering emperor also doesn't really matter since we'll still get the attack trigger as soon as the mind breaker turns sideways so there really aren't a ton of instant speed removal spells that are commonly played that could take out the mind breaker before it manages to attack and to mill half of the opponent's library and then once we get an attack in with a mind breaker it's pretty easy to close out the game with jace milling the opponent for another 15 cards especially when we've got a ton of card draw to find additional copies of Jace throughout the deck. And then Jace has a couple useful abilities. The plus one to shrink down an opposing creature means that our opponent is forced to overextend onto the board to try and take out our Planeswalker, at which point we can cast one of our many sweepers. We've got four copies of Temporary Lockdown to deal with all one and two drops, including potential ossifications that the opponent may have used to exile our Planeswalkers. Then there's Depopulate to destroy all creatures, potentially making the opponent draw a card if they control the multicolored creature. And then there's Sunfall to exile all creatures and then make a large incubator token. So it's just nice to have a mix of sweepers, especially in the case of a peacekeeper naming one of the sweepers in hand. Let's say we have double depopulate. Now it's better to have one depopulate and one sunfall, so a peacekeeper can't really mess it up too badly. And then of course there's situations where it's nice to have the different options available. And then we also have some nice tools to help out against the aggressive red decks in the format. Three copies of Smite as an early removal spell also exiles the creature, which is relevant when facing Phoenix Chick or Squee. And then we have four copies of Sunset Revelry to gain more life, make some blockers to protect our Planeswalkers, and potentially draw a card as well. Faithful Mending, of course, an important way of discarding the Mindbreaker to put it in the graveyard in the first place, and can also be flashed back. And then the Celestus not only helps us make more mana, but by switching between day and night, we gain a bit of life and also get another discard outlet for the Mindbreaker. And then we've got another Planeswalker in the Wandering Emperor. Can also be used as a removal or to generate additional blockers. And it's also nice to have some instant speed plays to make it easier to pass a turn without playing anything. So it switches to nighttime. And then during the opponent's turn we can still play an Emperor. Or maybe cast a Memory Deluge. Which we can also flash back. So we also don't mind discarding it. There are scenarios where we might want to mill ourselves with Jace initially. To try and mill a Memory Deluge or a Mindbreaker. But usually the plan is to first unearth Mindbreaker to mill the opponent opponent and then start milling the opponent with Jace. Now of course we could also mill the opponent with Mindbreaker and then now they have 20 or more cards in their graveyard and Jace's minus two ability will now draw us three cards as opposed to one so that's also a play pattern that could come up and we also have the flexibility of playing Jace for three mana as opposed to four so that kind of fills out our curve nicely. And then our mana base has lots of blue-white dual lands. Since we do need double white for temporary lockdown, we would also like white mana on turn one for smite sometimes. And then we also need triple blue to unearth the Mindbreaker. So we do need quite a few dual lands to make that happen. So I'm even playing the Sea Chrome Coast, which you typically would not see in a control deck. And then two copies of Field of Ruin can also be a nice answer to opposing utility lands or creature lands that might make life difficult otherwise. And then still have Soaring City and Iganjo for additional interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Revelry does get a bit weaker on the draw sometimes since we're less likely to have fewer cards in hand than the opponent. But against blue-white soldiers it still buys us a bit of time. And then lockdown could be a nice turn 3 play or turn 4 if Thalia shows up gonna be a regal bunny corn so this is an invasion of segovia deck okay so sunset revelry prevents a segovia transformation next turn could also just be blue white kind of tokens um yeah i guess we can chum block the bunny corn for now
could also play a three mana Jace. But I think we just hit for one and cast Lockdown. And then next turn we can look into Jace. Double Veteran. And Officer, so opponents back on the board. Veteran would have been nice to exile with a lockdown. Could still depopulate here, wipe the board, and then there's fewer creatures we need to deal with. Opponent can still get back Veteran, make another token end of turn. So they'll still have some pressure left. So I think the plan is maybe to play Celestus. And then if the opponent doesn't cast anything, it'll switch to Knight, I can discard Mindbreaker. And then we can depopulate. Although if they have a Make Disappear in hand, we might regret this sequence. Okay, so I can pay for 2 mana Make Disappear, but not 4 mana if they set it up with Casualty. Could also just unearth Mindbreaker, since we're not dying on the way back. This plays around a counterspell, and then Jace times two can potentially mill them out. So let's give that a try. Don't really care if they have a Wandering Emperor to exile it, as long as it triggers, I'm happy. They actually had a Soaring City to bounce it, which, yeah, gets rid of it for good, so that's definitely the best answer they could have had. So that's too bad. At least now the coast is clear for Depopulate. Could also Field of Ruin their Beachhead, but then they could have two mana for Counterspell. I guess we move to the second main phase to get rid of the floating mana. Could also wait to maybe use Field of Rune on a Mirax, if they have that instead. So don't think it matters here, Plains or Islands. So move to the second main phase to get rid of the blue floating mana. And then now depopulate. Still in pretty rough shape, since our opponent's got double wedding announcement going, and they can still get back Veteran. And without that initial Mindbreaker to mill them, Jace is gonna require a bit more effort to get there, but now another Mindbreaker to the rescue. So yeah, unearth Mindbreaker, attack, mill for 22 essentially. And then Jace can mill for another 15. And then next turn, hopefully once again. Could also draw three cards here if we'd like. But uh, yeah, mill for 15 twice would get the job done. And we can pay for Make Disappear with Casualty next turn. So I think that's just a play. Could also just mill for 12. And then we force him to attack Jace once again. That's also fine. Surrender every last thought to Phyrexia. Put on dead mill another Lunark Veteran. I guess if they have double make disappear, they can get us. Or a negate. Can have a look at their graveyard, I suppose. Triple make disappear in graveyard, so... They might have one left, but we'll be able to pay for it. Eight cards remain. That resolves. And then mill for nine here will do it.
opponent with a Soaring City, Bouncing Jace, that's not going to help. In fact, now I could replay Jace and then draw three myself just because. And our opponent explodes, incredibly close game here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand is pretty slow to get going. Double Deluge and a Depopulate. Not sure if this is going to cut it. If it's a grindy matchup, then of course Double Deluge is nice to have. And we do have lots of cheaper cards we can draw in the meantime, of course. I'll try it, but uh, this could turn out poorly. Our deck is pretty resource intensive since we need to hit a lot of land drops. So mulliganing feels pretty bad, especially when on the play. So that's my excuse. My smite is good. So at least we've got some early interaction. Opponent Asper Colors, so might be control. Doesn't seem like Asper Legends so far. So yeah, having double Deluge is quite useful. Okay, it is Asper Legends after all. And uh, yeah, Rafine, we cannot smite. I think I'm still in favor of Deluge and then wait on Depopulate in case another creature shows up. They might have a counterspell for Deluge, but that's fine by me. And definitely want to wait for Lord Skitter to trigger so it doesn't exile my flashback card. Okay, Seraphine gets to draw and discard. And we get to Deluge, dig for some of our mill effects or some more sweepers. And find Jace, and do we need Field of Ruin? Might prefer Islands, so we don't have to pay life with a Darker Waste if we need Triple Blue. Field of Ruin can be useful if it destroys Plaza of Heroes to prevent them making their stuff indestructible. But uh, yeah, could already go for a Depopulate here, as opposed to Jace, Mill for 15. Doesn't seem all that exciting. Could also wait another turn and go for another Deluge, which isn't unreasonable, but I think we should try to manage the board a bit more. Rafine does get to draw being a multicolored card. And Danik is next. Also reason not to mill the opponent unless we can actually win the game. Okay, so... Now we could play a Celestus. And then I'm still a little bit short of drawing a card with Sunset Revelry. Could go Celestus for mana Jace, shrink down Danik. Don't hate that idea. And then next turn we can look into milling. Smite could also exile Danik so it doesn't uh, come back. Luckily it doesn't prevent us from unearthing a creature. Opponent did attack with both, so they could draw with Wedding Announcements. And they keep up Plaza and maybe some other interaction here. Okay, so what do we get rid of? Probably want to just flashback Deluge this turn. Could get rid of one Smite. Could also main phase flashback Deluge, hit a land drop and then still have Smite available. But we have two of them, so I think that's acceptable. Okay, find another Jace. So, yeah, if we just mill for 15 three times in a row, that would be game. Of course, our opponent can have their counter spells as well. But, uh, could be reasonable here. Mill for 15, or I can try and shrink down Danik once again. Opponent could also have a Wandering Emperor to flash in. I think we just mill for 15 and then pass with Deluge available. Another Denik hits the graveyard, can have another quick glance here. We milled a decent amount of spot removal, which is not ideal since those cards are pretty bad against us. 
opponent does nothing. Could also play around make disappear by just playing memory deluge. Opponent getting back Danik first. So they still have make disappear available. Could also just smite the smaller Danik and then still play four mana deluge. And then I could cast this now, because if they sacrifice a token to casualty, they don't get to hit us. So we'll just pay two now. Okay, and find some Mindbreaker. And Depopulate versus Wandering Emperor is interesting. Let's go with Depopulate. And then now we get to discard Mindbreaker right away. And I'm gonna unearth it. Uh, right away here. Attack, mill for enough to make Jace lethal here. And we can immediately play it. So that should be game over. And that does it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is missing second white source. No discard outlet for Mindbreaker yet. But it's not terrible. So our better draws include our Faithful Mending to discard Mindbreaker. Celestis would be good, fixing our mana, giving us another discard outlet. And then, depending on the matchup, either more interaction or card draw. Turn one planes. Okay, found our second white. It's gonna be a turn to adversary, so mono white aggro. So all these sweepers are quite useful. Another adversary. Could just take the hits. I think I still smite here. And then I'm not in a hurry to play Lockdown. Okay, now we can play Jace, shrink down the adversary. And then our opponent's going to overextend to try and answer Jace. And then we can wipe the board. Ooh, ossification. Alright, that makes me regret this line. Not always a staple in these white decks, but sometimes kind of a two or three off. Alright, so now we don't have an amazing play available. Just gonna pass it back. Adeline's next, so okay. So probably time for depopulate here. Could also Faithful Mending, probably draw land. If not, we'll still have other options available. Okay, no land, but we did find Memory Deluge and a Sunfall. So, definitely discarding Mindbreaker. And then could lock down just to deal with Adversary and a token. And then next turn cast a different Sweeper. Keeping both Sweepers in hand is also good in case of a Peacekeeper, making them too more expensive. So I guess we'll ditch Smite then. And I guess I forgot about Ossification being there too. So yeah, Lockdown gets our Jace back. And then I should just plus. So next turn I can potentially Unearth and Minus. Although we're probably going to wipe the board first. Thalia shows up. That's acceptable. Lockdown, of course, the reason why we're not playing ossification ourselves. So now we can uh, still depopulate. And then... Yeah, probably wait on uh, milling with Jace, although we have another one in hand. So we're not really in a hurry. 
could also just unearth and then mill. Since we're still at 18, we're not in any danger of dying. And then mill for 15 after milling for 24. So then another Jace is lethal. I guess if they play a uh, Peacekeeper, we'll still be able to depopulate if they name Jace. So yeah, I think this is fine. Sometimes it's good to want to control the board, but if we have lethal guaranteed in two turns, then we may as well go for it. Could also draw a bunch now with Jace. If we didn't have a second Jace, that might have been the play. So they've got nine cards remaining. And I can't think of too many things that can go wrong here. A Knight Errant. Opponents tapped out. And another Jace will do it. Not too many cards left in the deck for the Knight Errant to find. Okay. And they're not going to have any upkeep tricks to put more cards in their library. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. Got the early sweepers, our mill effects. Just waiting for perhaps a discard outlet for Mindbreaker. Opponent green white enchantments. Okay, so lockdown and depopulate are both going to be excellent. And we'll see if we already need to cast it, or if we can maybe go for a 3-mana Jace. Okay, Calyx. That one's pretty scary. And it does survive Lockdown. What we could do is Jace shrink down Calyx, but any other enchantment lets them grow it and then copy another card. But that would run right into Depopulate. Also, tiny chance your opponent would go for ossification, which then sets up our lockdown to get back Jace. So we're kind of forcing them to overextend in a way if they want to get value from Calyx. Although they can copy companion and get an extra replacement card. Gonna be a Weaver of Harmony. So we're gonna take quite the hit. If they have a Reign of Truth, we could be dead here. Alright, opponent attacks. Can copy Companion here, most likely. Copying Weaver seems a bit greedy to me, but maybe they have a plan for it. Okay, so now we get to depopulate and then still have a Jace in play. Boom, does get to draw off of it. And then I'm just gonna plus, because if they have ossification, we still have lockdown to get back Jace, it's not a disaster. Mending in the meantime a way to discard Mindbreaker. Cami of Transients, also good to exile. And a generous visitor is next. Okay, so if we can keep Jace around and then mill after unearthing Mindbreaker, that would be better. So start with Mending, see what we pick up. Mindbreaker and Field of Ruin can go. There's no utility alliance we need to deal with. And then I could lock down here. Or I can play Celestus. And then shrink down Kami. If I play Celestis now, next turn I'll have the mana to unearth and play Lockdown, so I think I prefer that. Also want to avoid milling the opponent since they could then get back Kami from the graveyard if we mill additional copies. Right, another Calyx is scary, especially if they have an aura to go with it. Audacity. Alright, at least Lockdown also exiles the Audacity. 
opponent can now finish off Jace. Or they can go face, put me to one, which is pretty good too. And let's see Audacity when it's put into a graveyard, so if we exile it, it doesn't trigger at least. Okay, so let's see here, opponent's got 46 cards, if I unearth, we mill them for 23. And then I can mill for 18, so it's not quite enough. But then I would also be able to play another Jace for... Well, I guess we can't because we're at 1. So that doesn't quite work out, but we're very close. So instead, we can cast a Lockdown. Then there's only a Calyx left in play. And then Jace could plus on Calyx. Can't use Soaring City because Tranquil Cove is tapped here. But I think I still like a lockdown. And then have to plus. Could be that to a string of enchantments, although we can also flashback mending to gain a bit more life. Yeah, if we had an untapped land to keep up Soaring City, this would have felt a lot safer. So Naturalist puts me to one. And Audacity on the Naturalist. I think if they went on Calyx, they would have had lethal, but opponent, of course, doesn't know what we have. Because then Flashback Mending would not have done it. So now we just keep a Jace and a land is fine, and then I can unearth and play 4 mana Jace, and that should be game. So yeah, they had lethal if they wanted to, but they didn't go for it. That's the advantage of uh, playing at instant speed, of course. And that's also the advantage of this kind of mill combo finish. Is that you can actually close out games a lot faster than your typical blue-white control. 22 cards remain. Could mill for 21 here. But we'll still need the extra Jace. If they block with Naturalist and Audacity draws, and then they would actually deck with uh, minus 7. So they don't have a reason to. Could have also drawn with Jace, but let's just end it. One card left. And one more Jace will do it. Okay, sweet. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Good mix of early interaction. Celesta's discarding Mindbreaker. So then we'll just need a Jace at some point. Opponent Esper Callers. Could cycle a Revelry, but they might still be on a creature deck. So I'll save it. We found our Jace in the meantime. So yeah, if we can switch it to nighttime, discard Mindbreaker, we'll be in good shape. Opponent's got to Rafine. Now we could also use Emperor and pay the ward to exile Rafine if we'd like. Either way, and discard Mindbreaker. Although I guess there is the fear of a potential Lord Skitter exiling it. So maybe actually discard Revelry for now. We'll have more opportunities to discard Mindbreaker with the Celestis in play. Rafine attacks. What we don't have is an answer to Shieldred if that shows up. So I can keep up my mana so they respect a the counterspell. Take two. I think that's fine, since I don't really want to face the shield right now. And then end of turn, I can still play Emperor and try and exile Rafine. Boon goes for Denik. So 
If they have a make disappear, they'll still be able to counter regardless. So that happens. And now if they make disappear, it would switch back to daytime, so then I can discard Mindbreaker. I've learned much during my travels. Let me so thanks, Al Rafine, pay the ward. Okay. Now, assuming they don't have make disappear, could go for Jace, shrink down Dunnick. There is a creature land, but this one only really deals one damage to planeswalkers, so it's not a huge concern. Yeah, that seems good. And then we can also sunset revelry. So we can Revelry. Sadly, don't gain any life. And then shrink down Denik. Counter on the token. And then now it will switch back to Day. Question is whether I discard Mindbreaker or keep playing around Graveyard Hate. Opponent had a Virtue token end of turn. Could discard Mending and then flashback Mending is a way of putting Mindbreaker in Graveyard. Yeah, I don't hate that. It's also good value to discard flashback cards in general. Okay, put on casting the 5 mana enchantments. We don't mind. Field of Ruin also an answer to the Fortress. So we've got quite a few options available. I could even flashback Mending and then still have enough mana to unearth Mindbreaker. Mill the opponent for 23 here. Is it rounded up? I guess 24. Uh, 23 cards remaining. And then I can mill for another 18. Gets us pretty close to lethal, but not quite. So instead, maybe time for Lockdown. Get rid of their creatures. And then still a Field of Ruin for Restless Fortress. And then keep taking up Jace. And then I still have the option of Flashback Mending. That looks good. And now I'll make a token. And alright, that's enough for a concession. Didn't even need to go through the motions here. But I think we were in a pretty good spot to mill them out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is lacking a couple of lands, perhaps. But it seems keepable enough. Especially nice against red aggro with the early smite and revelry. Black-white instead. So, if I take one damage, I gain four. We get to draw a card as well. I think that's good enough since we want to hit our land drops. No third land yet could be a problem. Turn to Missionary. Alright, we found our land. So now we can play Jace for three. Shrink down the Missionary. Wedding announcement is next. So we can lock down here just to deal with token and missionary. I think that's fine as opposed to keeping up smite, which could also answer missionary. But then they're drawing with wedding announcements. And with another depopulate coming up, we kind of want them to make more creatures. Could also just minus with Jace to get the extra card, maybe before Shieldred shows up. Since we have another Jace, and we do need to find a discard outlet for the Mindbreaker. Yeah, that's fine. No Alright, third Jace, so definitely don't mind using one for card draw. 
We could also mill ourselves in the hopes of milling Mindbreaker. And there's another one. So yeah, interesting spot. I think I just shrink down the missionary as opposed to trying to smite it because they could still have Wandering Emperor to put a boss one counter on it. Although, honestly, they probably would have played Wandering Emperor instead of Missionary here, if that's the case. But they could top deck one. So this seems less messy. And then uh, can smite the token, perhaps. This seems like a Virtue Maker 2-2. Two -two. Yep. Okay. So we'll see if they play the enchantment here. Just an attack. So we can smite the knight token. And then draw another card with Jace. At the very least. Opponent keeps up all their mana. Okay, Ravelry now buys me more time. But we're not making a ton of progress, being unable to discard the Mindbreaker. So it might be time to let Jace go. The thing is, I really want to unearth Mindbreaker before I start milling more with uh, additional Jaces. Since uh, it's kind of pointless to mill and then mill half of their library. So, step one. If I Revelry, we don't even get to draw a card. Since our opponent's got five in hand. So I guess we minus Jace first. See what we pick up. And I think I still mill the opponent here as opposed to ourselves. Since we've already drawn double Mindbreaker. I guess there's still Memory Deluge, but that's pretty far from getting flashed back. And reasons to mill the opponent is we could potentially enable the minus two to draw three at some point. Alright, found a land, that's good. So I could play three mana Jace and then still Revelry. Although there's a chance their opponent has something they can play at instant speed to prevent a card draw. And then Jace probably wants to just plus here on the missionary. And go for Revelry. Might have been able to lose one more life here, so we gain four. Did not pay too much attention to my pain land. Opponent's got a Wandering Emperor indeed. So we don't get to draw with the Revelry. But we have two blockers. So hopefully now is a good time to depopulate. And I guess our opponent also lost a life to cast Emperor, so they could have kind of uh, undone the life loss from a darker waste. So I don't think it would have really helped. So we'll keep Jace at a healthy loyalty. So our opponent's got 6 cards in Graveyard, if I mill 9, still not quite at 20, which is kind of the magic number here for the minus 2. Opponent's definitely aware of our sweepers, they're not overextending into it. But they're also not finding a 5th land to play Virtue of Loyalty. Gonna be a Sarah Paragon, get back a land. Okay, so now we can depopulate. And then Jace probably just wants to draw a card, honestly. No Find a Celestus. Can't quite double spell Celestus and depopulate, but Celestus will be a way to discard Mindbreaker now. Alright, so the game goes on. Ten cards in Graveyard. But our opponent seems to have quite a bit of graveyard recursion as well with Missionary, Paragon. So milling them is not necessarily to our advantage. Another wedding announcement, Emperor, so they can quickly repopulate the board. A lockdown, not a bad answer. So Celestus plus Lockdown. And then Jace will just plus here. Okay. Become 
So next turn we can maybe switch it to Knight, discard the Mindbreaker. Opponent just casting Virtue of Loyalty. So we seem to be in a good spot. Let your do the Especially if we can dodge some Graveyard Hate. So let's see. If I activate Celestus, that's three mana, so we'll be one short of Unearthing Mindbreaker. So I think I have to just pass it and let it switch to Knight. Or we can cast the seven mana Mindbreaker, but the chances of it surviving are pretty slim. I guess it doesn't die to go for the throat. And a minus from Wandering Emperor we don't care about. But they could still have some other removal. I guess we can have a look at their graveyard. There's not much of it so far. Still seems a little bit risky. The main graveyard hate they would have is something like Lord Skitter. But I guess we have Double Mindbreaker. So, yeah, could main phase activate Celestus. And then maybe take it from there. Another Revelry. So... We wouldn't be able to draw with it, but still make a pair of 1-1s. And then Jace can uh, plus or minus. Don't think it matters too much. If our opponent has a bunch of spot removal, they can maybe clear a path and kill Jace. But yeah, the plan now is Unearth Mindbreaker. Alright, go for the throw at one of them. And we'll trump the 4 4. Another Wandering Emperor. I am the Emperor of Kamigawa, and Just to deal one more damage to Jace. That seems fine. I, have got new moves to teach you. I guess now we can't minus 2 to draw three cards, but I think we'll live without it. Okay, so Unearth Mindbreaker, and then let's see, I guess we are facing quite a bit of power and toughness here, but our opponent's got 33 cards, so we would mill for 17, and then another Jace would be lethal. Could also Deluge, hit or land drop, and then still... Uh, Unearth Mindbreaker, just to use our mana a bit more efficiently. Since, let's see, if I mill for 3 after milling for 17, 16 cards left, 13 cards left, play 3 mana Jace, then um, I'll only be able to mill for 9, which is not quite enough. So yeah, let's go for Deluge, hope to find a land. We did. And then... Maybe go for Wandering Emperor as well. We're not in immediate danger of dying on the way back, since there's no creature land. And yeah, this doesn't matter, since our opponent can always block with a 7-7. Seven, seven. So I guess the safest play here would be to plus with Jace. Since your opponent will draw, and then mill for 15 is enough to win. So as long as we dodge a discard effect, we should be good. So yeah, ended up being a pretty grindy game. Had to cast quite a few sweepers to keep up. But we were still at a pretty healthy life total. And discard another Mindbreaker. Some fall also pretty nice here. Mill for 15, and that's Exaxes. And that does it! Awesome! So yeah, another win here. That makes it six in a row. 
Now, unfortunately, one matchup we did not get to see is against Monorad Aggro, and that's going to be the true test for a combo control deck like this one, since we need to survive for quite some time to pull off all our shenanigans. But our deck is certainly designed to beat Monorad, since we've got early Smites and Lockdown to deal with their creatures, and then additional life gain with Sunset Revelry and Faithful Mending can also buy us a lot of time, and then a couple more sweepers. So I think the matchup is certainly winnable if we've got a decent enough draw, and then it's just a matter of time before we can pull off our mill finish. So yeah, overall, this deck seems pretty well positioned for the current best of one meta. Control decks with lots of counter spells can still be tricky, but even there they can't really stop the unearth from Mindbreaker, since that doesn't actually use the stack in the same way that casting a spell does. So they're gonna need some pretty specific answers to prevent the Mindbreaker from milling them, and then it's just a matter of time before they're gonna run out of cards. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.